Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to part four of the Psycho Ranger story, episode 34 of Power Rangers in Space, Silence is Golden. So, Psycho Pink down, Psycho Blue down, onto Red, Black, and Yellow left. On the mark board for the Psycho Rangers is the, um, the artwork that I, I believe that was supplemented by Bandai America when they were doing uh, the toys for Power Rangers uh, in space that they, um, you know, as we saw from those prototype Psycho Ranger figurines that never came out when the show was, per was still being filmed. And when the show was still going on and when we were in the season back in 98. Now, like I was saying before, when we get to, well, on to with the Psycho Rangers trying to Find, well, the last three remaining Psycho Rangers trying to find their voices and their identities and the colors. You know, when when she when, when Astronema told the Psycho Rangers, find them but don't destroy them, they never not once, again, that's this is a plot hole, she instructed them to bring the, the Rangers to her, but it never ended up really happening. But though, again, Andros had been on the Dark Fortress before. But not the other Rangers, though. So that's how the Psycho Rangers teleport from the ship to Earth. All they do is just cover their faces and then poof, they're gone in their color streaks. But whereas when they disappear and go back to the Dark Fortress with Astronema for further instruction, uh, they it's just that wave, that liquid wave effect that we saw from that's lifted from Mega Rangers footage. And like I was saying before, back when I was discussing the earlier episodes of the saga about the human identities for the Psycho Rangers, because we're now getting to the point where we get to see their identities, because like I was saying before, last episode's commentary or the previous one, I discussed about how uh, in terms of the remaining Psycho Rangers and their identities outside of their Psycho forms and their monster forms, we only get to see only Psycho Red, Psycho Black, and Psycho Yellow's human forms when stalking the Rangers or finding any of the civilians of Angel Grove that may be the Rangers. Coincidentally, Psycho Yellow's human actress out of costume is the same actress that would do the vo that would also play Marina, that mermaid girl that Chad would go for in Lightspeed Rescue. But here, she looks very like I want to beat somebody up or you know something like that but that's what she is and then of course you know psycho black you know the guy who played him he's done a couple of things in power rangers before doing psycho black's voice and out so out of suit it makes sense making psycho red being played by a latino actor i mind that making him look like a latino version of ryan Steele from vr troopers That phone booth that Ashley's in talking, you know, talking over the phone, it looks similar to the phone booth used in the Bill and Ted movies when Bill and Ted would travel through time and stuff. Yeah, the psycho, but anyway, back to the Psycho Rangers. We never really saw their identity, you know, the pink and blue Psycho Rangers identities outside the suits. It was always these, th you know, the main three, because this is the only time we get to see them out of the suit in the show. But since pink and blue are destroyed, we will never know what they looked like human-wise. Whatsoever. And like I was saying also back before when I, when I was bringing up about this episode, when they did adapt this episode into Mega Ranger, 
you know, did, adapted this episode from Mega, uh, Mega Ranger to this for Power Rangers. This episode of the Neji Ranger arc, which is for the Cycle Rangers, in the, in the original Mega Ranger episode of this, this was around Christmas time. But again, we're not doing no more Christmas specials until Samurai, but, you know, for Power Rangers. But for, for a season as heavy with its, you know, themes of, you know, likely this being the last season and all, and Final Frontier and all, this season does, doesn't need a holiday episode or have any Christmas decorations around Angel Grove while, you know, Cassie's out shopping. And then the Psycho Rangers are stalking Pink and Yellow because although Ashley was just in the phone booth. But the plot hole is, how does she get out of that phone booth so early before the Psychos even knew that Ashley is the Yellow Ranger? Although, after all, Psycho Yellow always wanted to beat the crap out of Ashley. Just like Pink was wanted to for Cassie. And seeing the guys fix the Astro Blasters, well, that's nice to do because, again, they need full extra repair if they want to strike down uh, the Psycho Rangers or any other further thing. And TJ, you have no you you gotta have to be the dumbest idiot to want to think about using your morpher. Try some other method to contact Cassie. Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, at least we don't have that pager that with that pager looking thing we had back in the first episode of the saga. It's just a normal pager, nothing more. I can see why this episode is called Silence is Golden, because you say a word or make a loud noise or yell, cry, uh, uh, laugh, anything. The Psycho Rangers would find them and then hunt you down. That's what they would do. Again, they went well. It made sense for them to film these remaining episodes around the summer of '98 when the show was still on hiatus, and seeing why they have to wear tank tops and uh, it's the same similar fashion Cassie will wear in uh, with, with the pants and all that um, later on in um, Lion in the Sand. Because you know, again, California is always hot all around year round almost. But again, I don't know what it's like in California because I've never been there. But when they filmed these episodes back in the summer of 98, 98 when In Space was on hiatus, uh, following Flash of Dark Honda before the Rangers Mega Voyage. So when they were filming these episodes, it had to be this scorching hot, so it made sense. And also, not only that, in Mega Ranger, um, when Mega Ranger was wrapping up. Um, it made sense for them to graduate before we moved on to the next Sentai that, of course, would be Lost Galaxy Sentai counterpart and them graduating and, and whatnot. That old man looks familiar. Or look alike of someone that I saw off a TV commercial or something, whatever. Man, Psycho Yellow's human form is kind of hot, even though it's the same actress, again, who plays uh, um, Chad's mermaid girl crush in Lightspeed Rescue two seasons later from now. So that's Angel Grove Mall, the mall that Kimberly always kept talking about going to every time she talked about going to the mall during Mighty Morphin. This outdoor mall with some indoor uh, spots to it. Now, this element with the baby carriage um, going down the steps, that was also from Mega Ranger. You say a word, they're going to find you. Just don't do it. You know, and, you know, Angel Grove has... Oh, damn it! You just had to yell. And now the psycho rain. Yeah, that lady was not thinking, clear, you know, thinking, realizing that baby in the carriage almost. Oh, great. They found you. You better run. You just blew your cover. Now they're going to find your ass. Great. 
Nice going, Cassie. about the Psycho Rangers human forms they all got the same leather black jacket and the same black pants same black shoes different colored shirts you know them jackets were so the 90s I don't know if getting those kind of jackets are worth having now in 2022 you know, this is obvious. You know, this all this this ele this element with uh, the Silver Ranger is a clown, is a distraction for the psychos. That was in Mega Ranger also. Well, actually, here Zane dresses up as a clown, but yeah, but you know, well, actually, a goofy clown because you know Zane likes to be the life of the party. Basically, for our first Silver Ranger, he is supposed to be that life of the party goofball um, and all that. But that's what I like about Zane. But too bad he's such an underrated sixth Ranger. That's just my opinion. I don't know whether if that's a voice recording of them saying that we fooled the Psycho Rangers and ha ha he he, we fooled them and stuff. But I think I believe those are that's a sound recording because again, Zane left the clown clothes and balloons and stuff. So somewhere, I think Zane must have some sort of an audio recorder to trick the Psycho Rangers from afar. And some of the same clothing here that the Rangers are wearing, um. Yeah, that is a that's a sound recorder on, on, on his galaxy cycle from the behind. And then back to their psycho forms. Now, Carlo's wearing that black tank top and the beige um khaki uh khaki shorts. He'll he would wear that for the rest of in space when he's not in his uh, Astro Mega ship uniform. Yeah, I've noticed, and also foreshadowing line in the sand with the attire for some of the Rangers. Now, for the roll call for when they do the roll call um, versus the three, you know, six against three. That's kind of fair because three, six, nine. Well, if you count by threes, three, six, nine. Got it. Now, for them doing the roll call with them doing power black, power red, power pink, etc. I would have liked it if it was like pink ranger power up or black ranger power up. But did they have to do it? And then power silver. Well... Well, again, in Mega Ranger, it was like Mega Red, Mega Blue, Mega Yellow, etc. But whatever. But but that's what they did. Like in Five of a Kind, they had to think out the box, knowing that now that it's kind of easier to take down at least three of them at a time, but having the whole team was just too much. Even though Psycho Pink is kind of like the strongest of the Psychos, well, in terms of the two Psycho Ranger girls, because knowing, in fact, Psycho Pink was the most powerful, especially in my book. Again, when I talk more about that, when I likely do, of course, will discuss Power of Pink. It's easy enough for them to do like three at a time to take down the Psycho Rangers with blue, yellow, pink, and then lastly, red, black, and silver in that order. It's a lot more easier to do it tactically uh, with just only the six Power Rangers and only those three Psycho Rangers left. Okay, as for their monster forms, all right, here here we go how I feel about this. So, Psycho Red is this fire-based monster. Psycho Yellow is that of an insect, but very thick. And then Psycho Black is a rock monster. All right. But knowing of all the Psycho Rangers monster forms, now, nothing against Psycho Red or Psycho Pink's monster form or Blue or Yellow, but of all of the Psycho Rangers monster forms, I actually like Psycho Black's monster form a lot more because it's just something about his monster form that just ticks with me. Um, despite that, you know, we've had rock monsters before in PR, you know, especially during Zordon era. Like, you know, anyone remember the rock star from season one? But Psycho Pink, however, yeah, given that she was the most powerful of the Psycho Rangers, 
I mean, I'm not. I mean, not that I don't like Psycho Pink's monster form. Psycho Blue was, of course, ice based. Psycho Red is fire. Psycho Yellow, well, whatever insight capability she has in monster form, and Psycho Black is a brawling rock monster. I dig it. But since Psycho Green is only in the Boom Studio comics, and of course, based on somebody's uh, cosplay that finally made it into fruition of Power Rangers canonicity somehow via expanded media. Um, Psycho Green is green electricity based monster or something, but I don't know. Although Psycho Yellow's monster form would appear a few times uh, in Power Rangers when we get to Onyx Tavern scenes, but uh, especially in the next season. But although what kind of threw it away going back to Flashes of Dark Conda, though? <sighs> Yeah, and seeing the Mega Voyager getting its ass whoop, you know, because Psycho Black is very strong with those big fists. I would say of the three male Psycho Rangers in monster form, Psycho Black's monster form is probably stronger. But of the two female Psycho Rangers, Psycho Pink is the, str is the strongest. That's my opinion. But anyway, but Psycho Yellow's monster form, I just don't understand. Thinking back to Flashes of Darkonda, what threw it away and spoiled... Uh, the Psycho Rangers um, potential, likely introduction later on once we get into the late 30s, early 40s of the show is Psycho Yellow's monster form did appear briefly in the background among all of the aliens and monsters that was at the Onyx Tavern, which was the first time we actually saw it. But knowing the Onyx Tavern only appeared once in In Space, but twice in Lost Galaxy. And of course, Psycho Red's monster form would later be used in the first episode, but modified slightly for the first episode of Lightspeed Rescue for their first battle with one of Diabolico's demons. But we never knew the name. I forgot the name of that Psycho Ped, Monster Psycho Red repaint that they used for um, Operation Lightspeed. But I guess, um, well, again, Power Rangers and Sentai were always known for reusing their... Um, props and costumes every now and then or modify some old props and costumes to make new characters and whatnot. Oh, great. We went from vine tentacle fetish to rock monster tentacle fetish. Great. I don't know. Of all the times I like the Mega Voyager, but it seems like once we get to the near end of the series, Mega Voyager has become some of the we it's became one of the weakest Megazords that the Space Rangers ever had. Despite this is the one Megazord outside of the Astro Megazord and Delta Megazord where we got a Megazord that has the colors of all the Rangers on it because Astro Megazord was all silver and blue with the big with that big fat red M on the chest when the Megazord when the Astro Mega ship is the Megazord. But again, given the aesthetics of Mega Ranger. You know, I don't know why. It's no worse than... I don't know what's worse. Either Psycho Black and the other Psycho Rangers taking Mega, Mega Voyager to another uh, dimension, or seeing the Mega Voyager getting obliterated by Tankenstein back later on in A Line in the Sand. You know... I have never really thought I would see this really rather selfish side of Andros before. I mean, of all the times he was a jerk to the Rangers back in the beginning of the season, but once when we seeing him getting uptight about the Mega Voyager being sucked into another, uh, into a vortex, I have never seen him this way. You guys bail, I'm staying. Nope, that's just being selfish of you. Let's get out of here. We have to leave the Megazord now. Yeah, I have never seen the selfish side of Andros before. Of all the times he was being rude to the Rangers earlier, given that Andro, given that TJ and them were from Earth and knowing they were still on Earth, and knowing all the fight scenes, even via Sentai footages of on Earth, despite this season still being in space, literally. I feel like this is basically how General Havoc took over the Turbo Megazord done right, but this time it was more serious as opposed to what we saw back in Turbo with Clash of the Megazords, which was my favorite episode of the General Havoc storyline, a part of the Psycho, uh, the uh, Phantom Ranger storyline back in Turbo. Because when, you know, General Havoc took away the Turbo Megazord, now, this makes sense, but the, but the Rangers will get the Mega Voyager back the next episode, which is the final episode of the Psycho Ranger storyline. Man, of all the different, of all the many dimensions and other alternate galaxies we had in Power Rangers, I'm losing count. Now, what dimension and galaxy they took the Mega Voyager in?
I just feel like the Mega Voyager is perhaps, you know, as much as I still like it, it's probably one of the weakest Megazords they ever had in the season. Because I can see why the Mega Voyager, especially when we get to the latter half of In Space Before Countdown to Destruction, the big grand finale of the Zordon era. Um, I just feel like the Mega Voyager is just weak. Like, I get we have a Megazord that's colored like the Rangers, but losing it, well, again... So now we're on to the penultimate conclusion to the Psycho Ranger story. So closing is the recap for the next episode, but skip that. So tune in tomorrow for the final installment of the Psycho Ranger story in the commentaries.